Jadies and Lentleman, it's very hard to learn Premiere Pro on YouTube videos because odds are they're not making the same type videos that you want to make. And so they show you a bunch of features that you don't actually need to know. I'm going to make a video showing the way that I edit, only showing you the features that you really need to know. Uh, I should make things a lot simpler. So right here, I have an example SD card. Okay. I upload my footage to my computer. Here's that footage from said SD card, right? I copy that over to a folder on my computer so that I'm editing off of my computer. If you edit directly off the SD card, once you unplug the SD card, you won't be able to go back and make edits on the video. So here's your SD card. You drag the footage into a folder that's on your computer. You make it nice, neat, and organized. Then down here, you have your sound effects. You can copy and paste those sound effects directly into a folder that you're going to work off of. I'm just showing you an example of what there's a million different ways to do this. It doesn't really matter that much. The most important thing is you get your footage and everything, all your assets, the things that you use for the footage, you put that all in one place so that if you ever need to go back and make corrections, you can do that. Okay. So that's the file importing process, shoot the video and then, um, upload the footage into a specific folder along with sound effects, which I will attach a sound effects folder, um, in the description. So now we go new project. And again, I'm showing you start to finish. You probably know a lot of this stuff, but if you don't, it should be helpful. Okay. So, so right here I'm clicking in project location. So I click project location, choose a location. I'm going to navigate over here to premiere pro crash course. So that's what I'm making this video on. Um, and then right here behind my face, we have project name and we'll just go test edit for that. Um, from here, we're going to go down in the bottom right corner and we're going to do create. And here's where your window might look a little different depending on what your workspace is set up as. And you can adjust your workspace depending on if you want to do a vertical video or a horizontal video. So um, Tony actually showed me how to get a vertical workspace, which is super nice. So that's what I'll be working off of. So right now, if you go up in the top left where it says view or not view, actually window and then workspaces, and you see all panels is what I currently have selected. That's where I used to edit. But if you want to do vertical, that's also great. And for this video, it'll be a vertical video. So I'll click vertical. It changes my whole layout a little bit. Um, so yeah, from here, I rec it should in the top left say edit right there. What I recommend you do is do double click on import media. You're now going to navigate to wherever you imported your footage. So just bear with me. It's going to take me a second. Um, okay. This is where I imported my footage and my sound effects. I'm going to import those right here. Open. So you can just double click on this area here where it says import media to start. And, um, it should say project right under like right there. Um, we drag this video down here into the timeline and boom, we have the video now, but it's sideways. So what we now need to do is go up here to sequence in the top sequence settings and here is where we need to adjust it. So if you record it in 4K, then um, these numbers are going to be different. But if you record it in 1080p like I just did, then it's going to say 1920 by 1080. Now, basically, all you need to do is flip these numbers. I wish there was a quicker way to do this, but there isn't. Leave everything else the same. But right here, go in the uh, where it says 1920, put 1080. And where it says 1080, put 1920. That's going to make this a vertical video, but the video is still sideways. Okay. So... Now we can click on um, effect controls. It might be kind of hidden in this whole window here, but effect controls and then rotation. And you can either try 270 or 90, depending on which way you filmed horizontal, like vertically. So for me, I think this is a, it's nope, not 270. So we're going to do 90, 90. Okay. Now the video is vertical. Um, it's yeah, looking exactly as it should. So now that we have that, it's time to cut up the video. Um, so let's, to zoom in on this whole timeline area, you can drag this little dot where my cursor is and pull it in and it'll zoom you in or zoom you out and so on. So what I'm going to, what I like to do is just look for the first, um, look at the audio and that can kind of base where I need to start. So we'll go over here. So like we start. Right there is where we start. Okay. So a couple options here. I can either drag this end in over here and then drag this in this way, but there's another way that I also could do it. And I'll show you both ways so that it's, you can choose whatever seems most efficient to you. Um, 
right here wherever I drag along this blue line. If I click on this right here and then press keyboard shortcut C, that's the first important one to remember, keyboard shortcut C. Okay, now I have this little razor blade as my mouse. Now I click that, it chops that video, okay? Now, if I were to try to just click on this thing that I just selected now, it would just chop it again, which I don't necessarily want to do. So to go from C to just the regular selection tool back to just my normal mouse cursor, I go V and that takes me back to my normal mouse cursor. So you have C for your cut, V for your normal cursor. Now I'm going to select these that I just, you know, all this dead space that I don't need and I'm just going to press the delete button. Cool. Now from here, I can either drag this timeline way over here back to the beginning or if you the way that I prefer is right or right click in this dead space here and press ripple delete and it'll bring everything to the start. I feel like that's a lot more efficient. So um, now let's watch the, the, the video and, and see what we're working with. This roll of toilet paper might just fix your swing. Okay. So that's the first line. This roll of toilet paper might just fix your swing. I'm the second that I'm done saying what I say it should be right, right at the conclusion here. I cut it nice and tight and I press C again. There's our first cut. Okay. Um, perfect. And then, uh, now you see us get ready for our next line, move the camera angle. Okay. Here's the next line coming up. Also to, to move the timeline in short increments like that, I'm just pressing the space bar. Um, now I'll drag this guy in ripple delete. Like we just did the right click. Go ahead and give this drill a try. Okay. I just said what I said there. Now we can, you know, cut it right at the end of what I said. Boom. All right. No. And then whenever you're ready, you can, you can come in and see here. So I want you to put this toilet paper roll. Oh, I'll just say that again. Mm -hmm. And again, if there's ever a retake, it doesn't matter. You just keep playing over it. So I want you to take this toilet paper roll, stack it right up here against, stack it right up here against your bat. So right here, there's a couple, there's a little mistake. So we just go right here. So I want you to take this toilet paper roll. And then we can cut it from there. And we can skip ahead to right here. We drag it. Stack it right up here against your bat. Have you noticed now I'm working a lot quicker. Um, the only things that I'm really using are the C tool, the V tool, the C tool to cut, the V tool to just do a normal selection, and then right clicking in the dead space so that I can do ripple delete. That's all I'm using. So I want you to take this toilet paper roll, stack it right up here against your bat. Okay, now we skip ahead a little bit more. A lot of times what you'll see is when hitters go back here like this. And I remember I didn't end up at using that footage. I remember I used a part that was a little bit later, so I'll skip ahead. If your toilet paper is constantly falling out, you're dumping your hands, you're dumping that toilet paper. Okay, that's perfect. Don't dump the toilet paper. Don't, Don't dump the toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can go on and edit the rest of this video, but you guys have already seen what the final product ends up looking like, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to show you now how I add my finishing touches on videos, okay? So right now, this is what we've got. This roll of toilet paper might just fix your swing. Go ahead and give this drill a try. So I want you to take this toilet paper roll, stack it right up here against your bat. If your toilet paper's constantly falling out, you're dumping your hands, you're dumping that toilet paper. Don't dump the toilet paper. <laughs> this roll. So that looks great. That looks totally fine. We could totally use that, but what we do now to add the extra bells and whistles. This is where you got to really pay attention because this is where it gets tricky. Um, so right now, I'm at the very start of the video. I'm at the very first frame. Right here under effect controls in this tab, this is where I do the little zoom in effect or zoom out effect. So under scale, you have this little 100 thing and you see those two arrows. You can drag this way to zoom in or you can drag left to zoom out or you can just type in a number that you want. Let's say I zoom in on this right here. So that, that's scale is the zoom in. Position is where on this thing um where, where the video is positioned i i can you can use a couple things for this you can use the hand tool or and drag it or you can uh move the arrows here i i just move the arrows so highlight over this number and it moves the y coordinates hover over hover over this number and it moves the x coordinates so let's say i just zoom in right here on this toilet paper to start okay now for this whole clip right here it's this roll of toilet paper zoomed in on that toilet paper so what i end up doing is i create a point so, so watch how this goes. I zoom in on the, on the very first frame. I zoom in scale position, whatever. Um, after that I do toggle animation. Okay. 
What this does is it creates a point on this line. You don't have to understand how this works yet. Just copy exactly what I do. Eventually you'll understand it. Uh, from here, I skip forward with my space bar about a half a second or, or less. This okay, I just skip forward like a half a second or less. Okay, this little bar right here, this blue bar just move forward. These two like half dots that you see are the two points that I made a second ago when I clicked on the, the clocks. And again, you don't have to understand this, just bear with me. Now just click reset parameter and reset parameter. Okay, now we're back to zo has zoomed out as it was at the start, okay? But at this point, it's all the way zoomed out. At these points, it's all the way zoomed in. So the result is this roll is the quick zoom out, okay? Does that make sense? This zoom. So all you have to do is get the beginning of the clip, zoom all the way in, click on your clocks so that it creates a point right here, and then skip forward a half second, zoom out. Um, and then that's how that works. So uh, this roll of toilet paper might just fix your swing. So like right here, this roll of toilet paper. After I say this roll of toilet paper, I want to like zoom back in, okay? Because I feel like that's just the right thing to do. So to zoom back in now, what I do is I can create another two points. So it stays zoomed out for this portion. And then I skip forward again. Might just fix your swing. Might just fix your swing. And then I now that I'm further along in the video, I can do scale. Again, I drag it to the right. And I'm zoomed back in on both of us. Go ahead. And, and this is what the result ends up being. This roll of toilet paper might just fix your swing. Go ahead and get this. Okay. That's perfect, right? This roll of toilet paper might just fix your swing. That works out great. So now what I do is I add a little sound effect here. So Coach Rack Zoom, whatever is the name. I just got this sound effect off YouTube. Um, but I drag this over here to the very start of the video. Um, and I drag it into the timeline. And these, the A right here, all these tracks are the audio tracks. So this is where your sound effects can go in. I could drag another sound effect under this track. Um, there's all kinds of stuff I can do. But if I wanted to add more videos or like overlay an image or something, then I would import that into my library up here and then I could drag it over the top of this clip right here. And that, that would show as like an overlay. Um, this roll of but now you hear the little sound. This roll of toilet paper might just fix your swing. Go and then, um, yeah, so I just pair the sound effect with that little zoom in feature. Now this- Go ahead and give this drill a try. That go ahead and give this drill a try clip, I feel like should be zoomed in a little bit more. That's one thing, like I, if I feel like the person's too far away, the subject's too far away from the camera, then I feel like I have to zoom it in a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go right in here so that it's in tighter for that sentence that I say, and now we're looking at- This roll of toilet paper might just fix your swing. Go ahead and give this drill a try. And let's say I wanted to add a little check mark sound effect. Okay, we drag our check mark sound effect in there. So I want you to take this toy. Cool. Now, right here, it looks like we're a little off center with the frame, right? So we can use the, again, I'm dragging to the right on this little numbers on the scale portion. And then I'm dragging to the right or left on the position thing so that it's more on us. Okay. You should take this toilet paper roll, stack it right up here against your back. And let's say I wanted to have back-to-back -back clips be cropped the same, but I don't want to have to drag the numbers to the same spot. Super simple. Right-click. You're going to go up to copy, and then you're going to go over. Whoops. Hold on one second. Drag this. There we go. You're going to go up to copy, and then you're going to paste. I guess my face is in the way. Ah, oh, shoot. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. Um, now on this new clip, you're going to paste motion. You can paste anything you want. Like, let's say you did some visual effects. You can paste that across the board and I'll show you how to do that in a second, but you can paste any select attributes you want. So I just copied the previous thing. I'm going to paste motion and now it's going to be zoomed in exactly the same as the other one. Okay. Toilet paper roll, stack it right up here against your back. If your toilet paper's con- Oh, I want to paste it on this one too so that they're all zoomed in the same for this shot. Constantly falling out, you're dumping your hands, you're dumping that toilet paper. Now, let's say we wanted to follow the toilet paper. We're using the same concept that we used earlier, and I won't go into too great of depth here, but watch. Click on these guys right here, um, the clocks. If your toilet paper's constantly falling out. Let's say we wanted to, for so I made two points. Now I can make two more points right here and zoom in to the toilet paper, and then let's say we wanted to follow the toilet paper down to the ground, okay? We just made the two points. Now I skip forward a little bit. We see the toilet paper start to fall. 
So now I just move these um, coordinates here to where it's in on the, to the toilet papers in the center of the screen. And now I just made two more points. Now I skip forward a little bit. And then I move down to these next frames and get the toilet paper in the center again. And I just made two more points. You're done. Now I now just dropped and hit the floor. Now I move this down to the center again and I just made another point. Okay, so it keeps making points along this timeline, which basically just tracks the movement of wherever I want it to be in the screen. So now if we watch this from start, it looks like this. If your toilet paper is constantly falling out, you're dumping your hands. Okay, so dumping your hands. We already saw the toilet paper fall. So now I'm like, okay, I want it to go back up to Drew. So I create two more points along the timeline to lock in this spot here. You're dumping. And then now we go back up to Drew so that we can see him say you're dumping your barrel. And that toilet paper. Don't. Or jump in the toilet paper. And then this last one again. I'm dump the toilet paper. Talking from far away will just have me be in here close. Okay. So that's all like the, the cuts I'm going to do for this video. Okay. But then now I'm going to show you the color grading that I do and some options there. This is what we got so far. This roll of toilet paper might just fix your swing. Go ahead and give this drill a try. So I want you to take this toilet paper roll, stack it right up here against your back. If your toilet paper is constantly falling out, you're dumping your hands. You're dumping that toilet paper. Don't dump the toilet paper. <laughs> And there you have it. So now we do a little bit of extra work that you don't have to do, but that I like to do. Um, under this little drop down menu, you see Lumetri Color. Um, if you've done any photo editing before or anything like that, you can toy with these bars until it looks the way you want it to look. Um, what I recommend that you do is either just make simple contrast adjustments. Um, generally speaking, turning the contrast up, the highlights down, and the shadows up looks pretty good. Um, Actually, photo editing is kind of my forte. Like I know it way better than I know video editing. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff you can do with this. Another thing, like if you have like a, a what's a white background behind you, if you use this little eyedropper tool and then click on it, it'll fix your white balance, which you don't have to know what that means. Um, probably getting ahead of myself here, though. Um, you don't have to do this stuff. It's just going to make your videos look a little bit extra better. If you want to uh, find some sort of uh, color preset or something, you could always import that from YouTube or something like that to just add an extra flair or character to your videos. Okay. So that's what I do on my videos. After I edit one little clip from the video, I can, um, right click copy and paste that across all clips. Um, another way to do this is to create an, an overlay and drag it over everything. I saw Tony do that, but, um, this is the way I do it. You could, that way's the way Tony does it. It's probably actually better, but anyways, this is what we got now. This roll of toilet paper might just fix your swing. Go ahead and give this drill a try. So I want you to take this toilet paper roll, stack it right up here against your back. If your toilet paper is constantly falling out, you're dumping your hands, you're dumping that toilet paper. Don't dump the toilet paper. So yeah, totally works. Uh, from here, I'm going to show you my export settings because that's also important. And again, this is super basic stuff. If you're uh, I've done it already, but if you haven't done it before, I'm hoping this helps. So now we go, we click on export here in the top left. The export settings really do matter. So I'm going to drag myself over here. There we go. Um, drop down video. So first of all, find your location. Click on this little blue thing here, and I'm going to go navigate to my folder, Premiere Pro Crash Course. Great. Um, crash Course Video. Awesome. Now I'm going to drop down the video section and this is where if you have something that says 4k here, you're going to want to uncheck it and change this to 1080 by 1920. Because if you don't do that, you're going to, and you export in 4k, your phone's going to have trouble with it. For whatever reason, it won't let me save 4k videos to my camera roll. I don't know if that's a problem. Everybody has, it's a problem I have. Also, when you um, are uploading to TikTok. Instagram and YouTube, they currently don't go higher resolu higher higher of a resolution than 1080 anyways. So I recommend you just export in 1080 for the time being. That's the all you really need. Um, with that, you can click more and scroll all the way down. And this is where you want to go to your target bit rate. I've seen something set there. Like sometimes the target bit rate is set at like 50 or 70 or something like that. And what ends up happening is your... Um, your export file size is going to be way too big. So set your target bit rate um, to 11. If it's a 1080p video, if it's a, if it's a 4k video that you're exporting and you need to do that for some reason, set your target bit rate to 22. Okay. Otherwise set it to 11. All these other, all these other settings you don't need to touch. What if uh, you're not seeing the same thing as me, then check your format. If the format should be H.264. Um, and if it's not, do the drop down menu, find H.264. And then everything else leave the same. Make sure your frame size says 1080 by 1920. And then all this stuff can remain the same. 
and just make sure that when you scroll down, the target bitrate is 11. That's all you need to do. If you do that, the file sizes will be optimized and it'll still look really good, I promise. So from here, I just press export. And then if you have a Mac, you can either airdrop the footage to your phone or you can upload it to Drive. That part's super simple. 